We now turn to describe the spark of a matrix, a property that will become useful in extending the previous two author results to the more general case. We look again at the P0 problem, this time with a general matrix A of size n rows by m columns, where m is bigger than n. Our goal is to characterize conditions for a unique solution to exist. We have already seen the two author results and they are indeed inspiring. The question is whether we could imitate the derivations we have already gone through in order to handle the more general case. Recall the main idea we relied upon. We divided the matrix A into two parts and this enabled us to get the uniqueness claim. In this path, the mutual coherence was defined by the interaction between the two parts of A. Such a split of A does not seem to be relevant anymore, so what shall we do? Clearly, we will need to find a new route. Still, we are inspired by the two auto results and hope to get to something similar, even if A is no longer as structured. This brings us to the definition of the spark that will be found extremely useful for developing this new route. Spark is a property of a matrix A, just as the mutual coherence is, and it is defined as follows. Given the matrix A, spark is the smallest number of columns from A that are linearly dependent. Note that as such, spark has an integer value, being a counter of columns. Let's look at an example to better understand this definition. This matrix is the identity 4x4 matrix augmented with another column to the right. We are searching the smallest possible set of columns that are linearly dependent. Could it be one? The answer is no, since there is no single column that is linearly dependent. Only the zero column would have satisfied this requirement. Similarly, you cannot find a pair of columns that are linearly dependent, since this would imply that there are two columns that are copies of each other, up to a scale multiplication. This matrix does not have such columns. The spark in this case is 3, and here is the set of columns referring to this value. By the way, what is the rank of this matrix? Clearly, it, it is 4. Why are we asking about the rank? The answer will be given next. Indeed, what is the relationship between the spark and the rank of a matrix? In order to answer this, let's look at the definition of the rank and contrast it versus the spark. Rank is the maximal number of columns from A that are linearly independent. Observe how similar these two definitions are. Smallest versus largest, dependent versus independent columns. While these two definitions look so similar, they are in fact very different. More specifically, the rank is an easy property to compute, requiring n-cube operations. As we show next, Spark is far more complex. If we are given a matrix A, how can we compute its spark? If the spark is assumed to be K, this implies that we should be able to find at least one set of K columns from A that are linearly dependent. But furthermore, this also says that a dependent set with K minus one columns cannot exist. So here is an algorithm for computing the spark. It will start with K equals one and grow this value by one each round. Per each k value, we should sweep through all the possibilities of getting k columns from A. Note that the number of options here is m choose k. Per each set of k columns, we should check whether they are linearly dependent. If we find such a set, we are done and the spark is k. If no such set exists, we should increase k by 1 and proceed. Well, this algorithm is simple to understand and even easy to program. However, it is in fact impossible to use. The complexity of this process is exponential in M due to the number of choices we have to sweep through in the quest for the dependent set. Contrast this with Gram-Schmidt or LU factorization that compute the rank with a far more civilized polynomial complexity. So just to make it clear, Spark is not something easy to obtain and we will come back to this difficulty later on. At the moment, we should proceed with the assumption that for a given matrix A, its spark is known to us. Let's meet few properties of the spark in order to better understand it and its role in our story. The very first property defines the range of values the spark can obtain. The minimal possible spark is one, 
referring to the possibility of getting a single zero column in A. If such columns are not permitted, the minimal possible value becomes 2. The maximal spark value is n plus 1, implying that in the matrix A, every subset of n columns is linearly independent. If, for example, A is created by drawing its entries at random from a Gaussian distribution, the spark is maximal. The same goes for van der Monde matrices that are encountered in polynomial fitting problems. The following property of the spark will tie it to our sparse length story. Assume that we are given a non-trivial vector x known to be in the null space of A. That is, it satisfies the equation Ax equals 0. Well, the immediate implication is that the number of non-zeros in x must be spark and above. Why? Because the term Ax combines column from A to create the zero vector, implying that these columns are linearly dependent. And such a set of columns from A must have at least spark elements. So a vector in the null space of A must have an L0 norm lower bounded by the spark. Indeed, this suggests an alternative definition for the spark, as the number of non-zeros in the sparsest possible non-trivial solution to the homogeneous system, Ax equals zero. We conclude this part with a brief historical note about the spark. We came up with this property in 2001 in uh, our quest to analyze the P0 problem. A year later, we found out that this property of matrices has been already defined and used. In a work from the late 80s, Kruskal, a well-known statistician, used it for analyzing tensor decomposition. In addition, a work in 1997 exploited this Kruskal rank in their analysis of sparse solutions to linear systems under a narrower setting. From a different perspective, coding theory uses a very similar notion to the spark for defining the co-distance, but their view is always accompanied by a finite alphabet algebra.